this is the jacking effect that uh, I've talked about in previous videos that is achieved in front wheel drive cars when the front suspension is really soft basically bottomed out and having stiff suspension in the rear the inside rear tire lifts off the ground on the brakes it's hard to see from this angle much easier to see from this angle that was aggressive tripoding that is desirable in front wheel drive cars and this is how I've achieved it it's supposed to be T5 I think that's right yeah yes that's correct mostly with the suspension with this particular car these are the values I've used very soft front spring very stiff rear spring and a relatively stiff anti-roll bar in the front um, the car the soft suspension in the front is to get the front end to dive and it's not the, the diving position that is desirable it's the transition from static to dynamic loading of the front end so once once the car is fully loaded onto the tire the front suspension will have hit the bump stop and it will understeer the front wheel drive cars will always understeer but in the transition from static load from a constant speed to decelerating the decelerating load in the transition from the neutral state to the fully dive fully dove the fully dove state there is extra quote unquote extra grip in the front end it's where the, the front end is not completely loaded to its maximum load or cornering load that is and so while braking or while lifting off throttle the car will start to quote unquote oversteer not, not quote unquote it'll, it will it can oversteer depending on how aggressive the di differentials and the suspension is but it will oversteer allowing the car to turn but once it settles into the corner the car will understeer and especially once uh, getting once you're getting onto the power the car will especially understeer um, just from power understeer so basically with this tripoding effect it's not the same as the rear uh, rear wheel drive cars whereas in those cars you're trying to achieve a static loading effect on the front end this is trying to achieve a dynamic loading effect on the front end so that in transition the car will oversteer and I will just di uh, display this is the word I'm looking for I will just show you by driving the car oh and these are the differential settings and the gearing um, for this particular car or I guess this I guess for all of them um, very open for, uh, initial t torque very locked acceleration torque and then or sensitivity and then very open braking sensitivity um, I have a little bit more more lock on the braking sensitivity for stability because I don't want the car to, to snap um, snap loose and then brake bias is really far back um, this is only particularly for this game um, generally for a front wheel drive car the the net braking force on the front end would probably be near 80 percent in the front because of how light the rear end is and there's no differentials in the back and and the, the rear tire inside rear tire is lifting off the ground and all that stuff so this particular game it, it's i don't know what the brake the neutral brake force is but it performs better with a more rearward brake bias in this game and so how it drives I have the front, or the uh, first gear, excuse me, very tall because this car is very slow and only has five gears. It's fine for this course because I only get up to fourth, but on other circuits I would get into fifth gear and top out. 
so I want to use first gear. Oh, that was a very tight turn. I slowed down too much. So let's demonstrate the oversteer on the brakes, especially with you here. There it goes. So the car does oversteer on the brakes due to the jacking effect, the aggressive tripoding. So this is the most you can get the car to steer in a constant radius turn. It's just understeers. Oh, it's supposed to be second. Yeah, that's right. So it will oversteer into the turn and then balance the car on throttle so it doesn't oversteer too much. And with this car, with low horsepower, you need every bit of torque you can get. So I'm using first gear even though I have to shift right out of the exit. Basically in underpowered cars where you're not slip limited, you're engine torque limited, using as much gearing torque as possible is faster. Notice how it turns really well mid-corner when I lift off throttle, so it turns, it turns tighter. There is a lift off. I didn't oversteer that much that time. I tried to do lift off oversteer into the turn, but it didn't work out very well. Almost missed the turn. And that's basically how this car drives. Now we'll drive a faster front wheel drive car. And I'll show my fastest time for this car. Excuse me. And as you can see right here, the 31.3 is the fastest I've got in the Fiat 500. And next car, the Focus ST. Make sure I'm choosing the right settings. T5, yes. And these are the settings. Um, basically, very stiff in the rear, same thing, very soft in the front. Got a stiffer anti roll bar in the front, and very soft. I would like a fully detached rear anti-roll bar, but it doesn't go to zero, so. Um, 2.5, this probably should be at 2.8, whatever. Let's see, um, similar, basically the same differential settings. I had these different and I tried these, because I was tuning the Abarth 500, the Fiat 500, and I found these were better settings. And then the gearing, of course, uh, weird Grinchismo stuff. Same thing. Brake bias. Comfort stuff. And I'll show how this car drives. Oh, too fast. Let's try that again. Should reset me. There we go. There's 
is that braking oversteer. It's not faster to do that, but it helps to be able to um, do that in necessary situations, which is that being oversteer. There's that oversteer. Sloppy driving. I like to stay in third. Because this car is slip limited in third. break at 100 this time. A little bit early. So as you can see, it oversteers in very uh, front-loaded situations, so generally on the brakes and off-throttle. And it really oversteers going from acceleration to deceleration. There it goes again. There you go. Yep. And on to the next car. And I'll show the fastest time we've got here, this car. And it is a 26, another two. Oh, because I completed a lap. 26.8. So now to the Civic. Same thing. Um, I, I have not fine tuned this one. I just drove it a little bit um, and with the little driving I have done, it seems like the wheelbase is a little bit long. Um, I could do some more fine tuning of the settings to find out just what exactly would work better, but it understeers a bit more than the other hatchbacks. And the gearing. Weird Grinchers and stuff again. And similar, or exactly the same, differential settings. And onto how it drives. So this can pull some really tight radiuses. You balance the throttle through the turn. Oh, a little late on the steering.
Oop, too much throttle. This one has a little bit more horsepower. It's pretty much maxed out on the capacity, the horsepower capacity of a front wheel drive car, around 350 horsepower. I'm not driving it very well. But just from having a little bit more horsepower, this car is significantly faster. Oh, if I could just make the turns. It doesn't oversteer as much, which is fine when driving perfectly. But. I don't always drive perfectly, so it's nice to have the option to oversteer when necessary. A little bit wide. And that's that. Let's uh, check what the fastest time was. It was a 125.4 with the Comfort Soft Tires. All of these cars driven with the Comfort Soft Tires. And that's about it. Till the next one.